Well, good morning and many thanks for joining us once more here on UBC. This is UBC Good Morning Uganda Extra and I'm Jerome Paul Sonko uh, to take you through the conversations that we are definitely going to be having this morning as well. So for, for wherever you're catching us from, many thanks for joining us. And uh, it's time for us to dive into the bigger uh, talking points of the day. Well, as we're getting into our conversation this morning, um, usually when you to draw back to Uganda's journey of the oil and gas sector, it does project a better future for our country. And it's something that we normally look at and feel excited as something that is going to be a game changer for Uganda's economy. But besides that, uh, when you look at uh, the supplier uh, oil and gas sector for the supplier forums that normally take place annually, they normally target uh, people who will be supplying to the sector and those that will as well uh, be supplying. It's, it's usually about people who will be supplying in the sector. It may not be supplying directly uh, the materials or infrastructure or whatever it may be, but it can actually go wide and beyond. Now today we are talking about a supplier who is also supplying uh, in the oil and gas sector market, but differently. And uh, of course, when I mention differently, it's someone supplying in written, or someone publishing and letting the world know, or even you Ugandans know about the opportunities available in the oil and gas sector and how you can utilize the same. Uh, this morning, we are definitely um, going to be talking to the author of um, The Barrel Magazine. That is none other than Bravo, Ronnie Katunji, who is the founder and the publisher of the same magazine. That is the Barrel Magazine. Many thanks for joining us this morning, Mr. Bravo. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, let me hope I'm pronouncing the name right. It's called Barrel Magazine. Okay. Yes. So then that means it does count yes. uh, in regards to how I've been pronouncing it. Uh, speaking of uh, the Barrel Magazine, mm. um, my viewer would wish to understand or would mm. wish to know how do you come up with, um, with the concept and why Barrel as the title? Thank you very much. Mm. Um, so Barrel is uh, in oil and gas. It's one of the basic terms that, it is, uh, that is used. And um, it mean it's, the, it's, the quantity, it's the quantitative way of measuring oil. Okay. So you see the same way you have a kilogram of sugar, you have a barrel of oil. So a barrel mm. of oil consists of about 159 liters um, equivalent. Okay. So that's how I come up with the name. Um, mm -hmm. The reason I, I decided to do Barrow, to do Barrow Magazine, mm -hmm. is um, one, there was need for a, a, a sector specific uh, publication or information that updates the country, the public, whoever is in, all the stakeholders, whoever is interested in the oil and gas sector. Okay. So that was one of the, the reasons why I started it. Secondly, mm -hmm. um, you've seen there is a, there's been a lot of clash, backlash of Uganda's oil and gas sector. Sure. Generally Africa, um, with some proponents in, in the West saying that we should leave the oil untapped, we should leave it in the ground. And there's been a lot of campaigns across the world to, to try and stop um, Uganda and other African countries from, from drilling our oil. So. And most of these proponents were using misinformation, mm -hmm. you know. They just, they, they were using misinformation because there was no verifiable place where someone can go and see what the truth is. Mm -hmm. um, it would catch on and people would, would, would go on. So we started Barrow yeah. so that there is a record of what the right account is okay. of Uganda's oil and gas sector. Uh, Bravo, um, shortly as well. Mm -hmm. Are you a writer by profession or mm -hmm. I need to understand because when you set up a publication as specific as this one, a yeah. magazine, yeah. Uh, basing on oil and gas. Yes. I want to be, I've seen blogs, I've seen some journalists writing about the same. Yes. Should we refer to you as a journalist by profession? Should mm -hmm. we refer to you as a, a student of journalism? Mm -hmm. Just briefly, uh, who is Bravo here? Yeah. So, yes, sorry, I should have introduced myself in depth. So, as I said, my name is Bravo, Ronnie Katunji. I am actually a chemical engineer, mm -hmm. that's my profession. I, I did my degree at the University of Surrey in the UK, okay. and also my master's mm -hmm. in the UK, majoring in uh, refineries and petrochemicals. So mm -hmm. you, would, you would say I'm a writer, I love writing, <laughs> I, I love reading. 
But uh, the main reason why I started Barrow was not really to tap into my journalistic abilities. It okay. was because there was a need. Mm -hmm. And what we engineers do best is when there is a need, we find solutions. Yes. And so Barrow was a solution. Okay. Yes. Uh, let's look at the, uh, into the context of uh, the Barrow magazine, though. Yeah. Uh, what are some of, you know, the key... Um, the segment, or rather, what are some of the, s the key segments in there? Yeah. You've actually told me off air that this yeah. is the third edition yes. of uh, the magazine. Yes. First, let's get back to the very first yes. edition of mm -hmm. the Barrel magazine. Yeah. What were you looking at in the first place? Okay, so this is the third issue, as I mentioned, and mm -hmm. uh, it's now a year because it started, the first issue came out in November last year. Um, 2022 that okay. was our first issue mm. and uh, the idea is for it to be quarterly and the first issue really was an introduction of Uganda's oil and gas sector from mm. the very basics from okay. the time we we discovered commercial oil in Uganda in 2006 mm. to FID last year which is the the final investment decision where mm. the people where the the investors really you know, committed that they're going to invest over 15 billion mm. US dollars in, um, in our economy. Okay. So, Barrow takes you on that journey, mm. you know. I, I feel like it's one place that you can go and find factual information that will, will help you to get up to speed, even if you are somebody that totally knows nothing about Uganda's oil and gas and you're interested. When you pick up from our first issue and read through to where we are now, you will have a very good idea of who the players are, what, what are the updates on the big projects that are happening right now. Mm. And it's not really me that writes everything in the magazine. Okay. Like our current issue, we have an exclusive interview with uh, Felipe, who is the general manager of Total Energies. Okay. Who are the biggest investors in, mm -hmm. in our oil and gas sector. True. And many other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, as well, if you're to look at uh, the kind of situation that is actually coming in, when you look at the percentage breakdown of the Ugandan, uh, Uganda oil and gas sector, the yeah. talent is 62%. Yes. We have an 8% for Sinoc. Yes. That is the China oil and offshore company. Mm. We've got a 15% each for Uganda and Tanzania. Yeah. That total is up to 100. Yeah. Uh, but also, what are some of the major uh, or the main projects in yes. the oil and gas sector in the country? So that are highlighted in the borough magazine. Yes, so in the borough we have a section that in every issue, which is called project, flagship project updates. Okay. And that is uh, looking at the big projects that are happening right now. And they're mainly, there is Tilenga, um, Tilenga project that is uh, being operated by Total Energies. And this is um, where actually most of the oil fields that are are going to give us up to 190,000 barrels per day at peak okay. are going to be located. So currently there is a, a already drilling happening. It started in June this year. Mm -hmm. And so far they have put up uh, two rigs that are going ahead to drill the oil, the oil wells. Um, the drilling is um, done in such a manner that um, it, is, um, it is phased. So they won't drill all the wells at the same time. They will drill enough for us to, to, to get to fast oil. And then the other big project that we have is, um, is the one that is operated by Sinoc, and that is the Kingfisher project. Now, the Kingfisher project at peak will produce about 40,000 barrels a day. Mm -hmm. And um, that is um, down in Buhuka, at the Buhuka escarpment in Chikove district. And there they also have one rig which is already drilling. And hmm. um, in fact, th for them, they started a bit earlier. They've been drilling since, uh, since February, uh, since January okay. this year. Hmm. And they've so far drilled about four wells and the drilling continues. Okay. Then we have uh, another project which is the ECOP. Okay. I'm sure you've heard of the ECOP. Sure. And that is literally going to be a pipeline that will help us to uh, to take the oil that we're producing here in Uganda to the world market. Um, uh, well, Bravo, one of the bigger concerns about the climate activists or those who are actually against uh, the oil and gas sector yeah. or against the East African crude oil pipeline project yes. uh, act is actually in relation to uh, the context of climate change yeah. and then the green agenda. Yes. Uh, briefly, 
with what is actually in the magazine, yeah. uh, how is the Ugandan oil and gas sector uh, mm. being projected out and how feasible mm. is this project okay. in the context we're in currently, okay. addressing climate change? Yeah. Mm. So when we talk about climate change, we have to really put in context, especially when we're talking about Uganda. Uganda contributes around 0.01% CO2 emissions okay. to the global CO2 emissions. And um, so the, the whole climate um, agenda has to be put in context of economic prosperity because you can, because uh, people right now need energy in Uganda. There is no country on the planet that has developed without utilizing its energy resources. And um, Uganda is blessed to have oil, just like these other countries. And all the countries have used their oil and gas industry. Now, Uganda has said that we are going to sustainably utilize our resources, okay? Yes. We, we need them because we need to, el to alleviate our people from energy poverty, mm -hmm. but we're going to put in place all, we're going to put in place, um, we're going to put in place all the measures that we need to protect the environment. And they have gone to s a, a lot of depth, including mm -hmm. putting uh, mitigation policies, including contingency plans for in, in, in case of oil spills. They are actually, by the time the projects come on stream, Uganda will have more forest cover than before because they're investing a lot in, um, they're working with the National Forest Authority, they're working with UNOC mm -hmm. to plant a lot more trees, to restore forests. And also the pipeline, for example, ECOP that is being talked about is not crossing Lake Victoria as, as people have said. It's also going to be buried underground. So they'll dig a trench, they'll bury it about, you know, a, f a few meters down and the, the surface will be resurfaced and you know there will be grass you won't you will not know that there is anything going down there mm, but uh, then that brings me to <coughs> trying to as well um, understand how safe is the yes. space yeah. the safety yes. of the sector yeah. uh, these are all questions I'm bringing about because yeah. they are in the barrel magazine Definitely. what someone is actually going to find in the copy yes. once they buy it yes. or once they acquire it yeah. so we need to as well understand mm. how safe mm. is the sector yeah. where are the safety measures yeah. how ready is the country mm. for the rollout come 2025 that is that is a very important question and um, talking about safety apart from the aviation uh, sector mm. I would say the oil and gas sector is one of the the most keen when it comes to safety and um, you know oil has been has been um, drilled all over the world and the companies that we have here are not your mediocre companies you have mm. all the biggest proponents here you have total energies which is one of the biggest companies in the world you have the Sinoc, which is also the biggest oil company in china now recently about a month ago total energies was celebrating 20 million man hours with no incident. Yeah, what does that mean? If you've been to, you know, to Tilenga and seen the industrial park and the kind of machinery, and you know, over 1,500 people working, trucks moving up and down, you know, excavators working, there is a lot going on right there. But someone to achieve about 20 million work hours with no incidents, with no, lost time, lo uh, with no time lost because of injuries, shows the commitment in the oil and gas sector mm -hmm. for, in terms of safety. But also, if, if you go to these places, they have safety officers, they have safety supervisors. Before you enter into any of their premises, they give you what they call a, self a safety moment, mm -hmm. safety brief. And uh, so the oil and gas sector is a very dangerous sector, that one has to be said, uh, because of the kind of material that is being used. But mm -hmm. you will not refuse to cross the road because you don't want to be run over. Okay. What you will do is you will follow, you know, you will look right, you look left, you will follow the road markings to ensure that you're safe. So mm. the oil and gas sector is definitely putting in place what is necessary Okay. to safeguard these people. In the magazine, do we have um, project affected uh, persons benefiting in any way? Have they benefited uh, in regards to 
having left their places of, of stay, we've seen people being displaced from their areas and others yeah. relocated to other spaces. Yeah. Uh, do we have that in the context of the magazine? Yes, definitely, uh, because you know these projects are not done in in a vacuum. They are done in some of them are done in places where people were staying before. Yeah. Some of them are uh, being done on land that was previously owned by some other people. But um, they have a very elaborate process about how they go in acquiring land for the projects, and they have been all the projects, whether it's Tilenga, whether it's Ecop or uh, Kingfisher, they have mapped out all the people that are affected by the project and they know each and every single one of them. And um, there are those that have opted to get cash compensation and there are those that have opted for in-kind compensation which means that they build a house for you um, rather than giving you money. Now mm. for Tilenga, if I can give you some numbers, sure. there is there was over 5,574 affected people. Also, sorry to cut you short. Yeah. Also to mention is that every number is actually giving is what is actually in the magazine. Yes. So if you are um, highly interested in the sector as well and you need to f find out more about Uganda's oil and gas sector, the Barrow Magazine, as we continue the conversation, we shall as well be sharing how you get it, how much it costs and the like. Please continue. Thank you very much. So I was, I was giving you some numbers. Mm. Um, I was in terms of ECOP, over 177 households decided that they wanted to be compensated in kind and be given houses. And to date, all the 177 houses have been built and handed over to, to these, these project people. affected okay. people. And if you see the upgrade of their previous houses, you know, before they had small mud houses, grass such houses, now they have, you know, they have, uh, you know, very nice houses that uh, have solar power, that have running water. All these, uh, these are done so that, so that these uh, people are even elevated to a status above <coughs> what they were doing before. And so for, t for ECOP, they've built all the houses that were necessary. For Kingfisher, also mm -hmm. about 64 households requested that they be compensated in kind. And they have also got all their houses. Mm -hmm. ECOP, about 85% have already been compensated. So these project affected people actually, the term is not affected. They have been positively affected because right now they have services that they could only dream of before the oil and gas sector came to their, to their villages. Now they actually have them because of uh, the oil and gas sector. Yes, because of the oil and gas sector, they have gotten new houses. They have been employed, you know. Mm -hmm in terms of employment, over 4,000 people from okay. the project, where the areas where the projects are happening have well, gotten that, jobs. You know, in that regard, I yeah. need to as well understand where are the opportunities at for the Ugandans? Yes. As you mentioning the jobs, where are the opportunities? <coughs> Most yeah. of the times we report or the stories we tell on television, media yeah. outlets, radio, name it, is yeah. the oil and gas sector has great opportunities. I did yes. even mention in my introduction that we have lots of opportunities. I did not even highlight the opportunities. Yeah. Where are they? If you are to break down for the viewers, especially those who are highly interested in the sector, okay. who feel, or those who are actually doing courses related to oil and gas, yes. beat those in climate change, yeah. what opportunities mm -hmm. does the sector provide for Ugandans? Thank you very mm -hmm. much. The, the sector has really given immense opportunities for Ugandans. And... Uh, Many are benefiting already. There is over 13,000 people that are directly employed right now because of the oil and gas sector. And 94% of them are Ugandans. So people are already getting the jobs. And then, um, as I told you that when FID was taken, the, these companies committed to investing over 15 billion US dollars in the Ugandan economy. Now, what does that mean? It means that these people need food, you know, so there are companies right now that are supplying food. These, um, when the projects are happening, there is a lot of Ugandan companies that are doing the earth work, that have got contracts that are worth hundreds of millions of US dollars. Mm -hmm. And what do these, if, if a company gets a contract, it needs Ugandans, it needs people to work for them. So a lot of people are being employed and there is a lot of good stories. There is a, 
I can mention some of the companies. There is Pal Engineering. It's a totally Ugandan <coughs> company that is doing most of the earthworks for ECOP. There is Rohi uh, Investments Limited, which is a completely Ugandan company that is, is uh, handling millions worth of, of dollars of uh, contracts, doing the, the, the earthwork movement, doing the compacting. Then there is uh, people that are employed by these companies that have come in, Total Energies, Sinok, they have established offices here in Uganda, they are offices in Kampala, they have offices in, in, um, within the oil region. And all these offices, are, they employ Ugandans. And even the companies that have come in as subcontractors for some of the services that are unable to, to be given by Ugandans, those companies come here and before they do any work, uh, there is a regulatory authority called Pet Petroleum Authority of Uganda. And for you to get a contract, if you are a foreigner, you have to show a plan of how you're going to employ Ugandans. Hmm. How many of them are you going to employ? How are you going to train them? So I, I would say that Uganda has really done a good work in terms of looking out for their people because in some other places where even around the continent, people have discovered oil and this oil has not really benefited the people. And I can tell you that in Uganda, that's, it's a completely different story uh, because already there is a benchmark of how, what percentage of that 15 billion that is coming here is, should go to Ugandan companies. I know. Yeah, and they're making sure that they, they really track this and mm. that they follow up with these companies, mm. the big companies, to ensure that they come clean on their word. Okay. Well, um, the, uh, Bravo, as we're going to the break, yeah. how uh, viable is it that we shall be getting our first oil 2025, in your own opinion? Well, in my opinion mm. is that um, we are on track. Okay. Uh, we're cutting it close, I would say, mm. but definitely uh, by the end of 2025 or if it spills over towards the beginning of 2026, mm. we shall definitely see our first oil because... We are on a trend that cannot be reversed. And well, with the Barrel magazine, you'll be definitely getting this, you said, quarterly. Yes. On a quarterly basis to follow up on the same. He may not be the right man to answer whether 2025 will be the very first time, but at least he's in the sector and he will be giving you more of those updates. After the break, when we do return, we speak more about the Barrel magazine. I would, uh, I want to think or believe that you also want to know how much it does cost as well as where you can actually get it. And when does it uh, get rolled out? He said on a quarterly, but is there a specific date when we get to see a new edition of the Barrel Magazine? The bigger discussion this morning is uh, the Barrel Magazine, but deep inside, we have conversations rotating around the oil and gas sector of Uganda, a new shape for Uganda's economy. You're watching UBC Good Morning Uganda Extra. We do return shortly. Live from UBC Studios in Kampala, this is Good Morning Uganda Extra. African Airline Association, in conjunction with Uganda Airlines, presents the 55th AFRA Annual General Assembly between the 19th and 21st November 2023 at Speak Resort Hotel, Munyonyo, in the heart of Uganda, the Pearl of Africa. In attendance will be 500 high-profile African and global aviation leaders, 40 airline CEOs making strides to transform aviation for development. The 55th AFRA AGA is proudly powered by
Juku. Yo. Hawa Chiku. What did I? Chick the shopping man. What's your secret? <laughs> We're gonna hang. Mm. Haven't you heard of the Parish Development Model PDM? Yes, I did, but I thought it was just a toy. Ah, no, say what, yeah. Mm. It is real. Mm. I and a few friends together mm -hmm. formed a circle, accessed money from the PDM, mm. invested in a portrait project, mm. and now things are moving. Uh, 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 Juku. <laughs> I thought I was one of your friends. You are. But you left me behind. I didn't leave you in poverty. Mm. But what you do, uh -huh. just visit your LC2 chairperson and mm -hmm. your parish chief mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. and start the process of economic transformation mm -hmm. eh, just like that okay. <laughs> the parish development model is an initiative from the government of Uganda mm -hmm. through the Ministry of Local Government mm -hmm. designed to transform all lives of Ugandans for the better <laughs> PDM my parish, my development, my life live from UBC Studios in Kampala. This is Good Morning Uganda Extra. Good morning, Uganda Extra. It is this morning again, and many thanks for sticking around to your public broadcaster as we continue to have our conversations uh, this morning. And I'm glad you are watching wherever you are. It's cold here in Kampala and uh, most parts of the country. It's raining, I should say. Uh, put it out there so you can clearly see how the weather changes are really likely to be affecting the flow of traffic, especially in such times as we are getting closer to the festive season. It is the 11th month of the year. We are moving on well so far. I don't know how fast you've gone when it comes to your New Year resolutions that you started with in January, uh, but the chances are maybe if you failed at it this year, you can set new ones for 2024. Uh, things can change easily for you. Well, our conversations are still rotating around Barrel Magazine some changes there in regards to how <laughs> we, inter uh, we, we can play al along with the verbs and you know the joining words so we are having conversations around barrow magazine or looking at barrow magazine in full context the third edition of it and of course looking at the oil and gas sector as well and with me in studio this morning i am with um, the writer founder and publisher, or let's say the publisher and founder of Barrel Magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, this is none other than Bravo Ronnie Katunji. So we're having these conversations all in and all out. Uh, Bravo, as we're getting into further understanding of <coughs> the entire oil and gas sector, mm -hmm. uh, there is um, a bill in Parliament. Uh, this is rather the oil and gas, rather the petroleum supply amendment bill, yes. which is uh, having provisions that seek to grant exclusive rights mm -hmm. to the Uganda National Oil Company mm -hmm. uh, to supply uh, imported petroleum products in Uganda. Yeah. What is your take on this uh, in regards to this bill and then other provisions? Mm -hmm. Where do you think we are shooting the right uh, cards if mm -hmm. we are to take on this? If we are to take on this bill? Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe to give context, so you know mm -hmm. the Uganda National Oil Company is. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's a government company. It's a government body. It's wholly owned by Ministry of Energy and Ministry of Finance. And uh, what its mandate is, is to look out for the commercial interests mm -hmm. of Uganda in the entire value chain of oil and gas okay. sector. So, and we know that in the, in the coming future, UNOC is planning to have a refinery. Yeah? So Uganda is going to build a refinery which is going to produce about 60,000 barrels of crude of, of uh, 60,000 barrels of crude oil a day. And what that means is that at that time we shall be talking about using our own diesel, our own um, petrol from our refinery. But currently we import all our petroleum products. So given that in that context, what has been happening is that uh, Uganda has been mainly how we've been getting our petroleum products here. We've been buying them from private Kenyan companies who buy in bulk, okay? And those companies, they buy in bulk from, you know, the Asian suppliers and then the Ugandan private companies buy from the Kenyan companies and then supply to the Ugandan market. And um, what has been happening, and the president has been uh, vocal about this uh, for a while, is that uh, 
because it's a business, okay? So these Kenyan companies price these uh, petroleum products a little bit higher than what it should have been if we had bought directly mm -hmm. from the, the, the big dealers. So what Uganda is saying is that uh, through UNOC, we shall have UNOC buying directly from these guys that supply in bulk. And when they buy, then they will sell to the private uh, Oil, sorry, to the private oil distributing companies. So what that means is that uh, the companies that have been distributing the oil are not going to be affected, which has been one of the worries. Actually, they will be able to buy from UNOC probably at more competitive rates because UNOC is going to be buying in bulk. Uh, the only difference that it's going to make is that we're not going to be buying from the Kenyan middlemen. We shall be you know, buying directly, you know, could be buying directly from a company called Vitro and then supplying to these private companies who will then supply. Uh, so in my opinion, it's very good because um, for companies that have developed, the oil companies, the national oil companies have contributed immensely to the revenue streams of the country. Now, right now, you know, is is beginning, yeah. It's it's uh, it's our, our I call it our baby. It's uh, we need to nurture it, and when we give it, let's say when they get a revenue stream, then they they are off the government coffers because right now we need to get money from the consolidated fund to help Unoc run its activities. Now through this venture, Unoc will be able to make some money, mm -hmm. and that money, in turn, will help them to to achieve their mandate because they have a lot of obligations as a national oil company. Then secondly, it actually gives us a bit of a, it gives us a bit more security in terms of, uh, of, of oil and of uh, petroleum products. Because when the supply chains are disrupted, you find that uh, because these private companies that are dealing, they don't get as much, uh, they will not be given uh, as much emphasis if there is disruptions in the supply chain. But if you're dealing with the government, then they'll be giving them a bit more consideration. And so that will safeguard us from having fluctuations in, yes. the, in the market. So I am, I am for the bill. And I think uh, if it's handled properly and done properly, because, and I know it will, because uh, we will have very competent people um, in UNOC. It, it will, in the end, benefit all Ugandans. Because if we can buy these petroleum products a little bit cheaper, we might start seeing it reflect on the pump. Mm. Um, and then that will be a win-win situation for all of us. OK. Uh, how hard is it? Mm. Or how hard has it been for you? Yeah. Uh, three editions now out. You yeah. started November 2022. That's last year. Yes. So that means in a space of one year, mm. you've been able to publish three magazines. Yeah. How has it been for you to break through yeah. the market? Mm. And then also looking for the readers. Let me yes. put it in that way, because the yeah. clients or the customers in this space are the readers here. Yes. Um, in a market where not so many um, further invested mm. in the oil and gas sector, only those yes. who have already seen yeah. how important it's going to be. Yeah. Now, how, how hard or how easy mm. has it been for you yeah. as a publisher? Well, I would say... Um, I have a good team around me. Okay. I have a, you know, a very good editor called Josefa Jabo, okay. who has been in the media space for a while. Mm -hmm. So she's been an asset. Okay. Um, then in terms of how hard is it to find readers, honestly, mm -hmm. I don't think it's a problem of having, mm -hmm. because it's information that is needed. Ne the oil and gas sector is the biggest uh, news right now in the Ugandan space. So I feel like there is a lot of interest, yes. Uh, generally, people are not interested in reading, <laughs> you would say. Mm -hmm. But we are trying to change that culture. Um, it has, of course, like all things that are new, mm -hmm. it was a challenge to start with. Because you need, you know, you need uh, people within the industry to buy into it. Because, uh, it's, as I said, it's not me that writes these articles. I get them from people in the Petroleum Authority of Uganda, people in UNOC, people in SINOC, people in Total Energies, people that are actually doing the work, okay? So for you to get them to trust you to, to you know, to be a mouthpiece for them mm -hmm. has taken some time, but I think we have made a lot of progress. 
And as you can see that in our latest issue, we, we had an interview with uh, Felipe, who I would say is, uh, you know, is one of the biggest people in our oil and gas space. And so in terms of getting readers, the, just like most things in Uganda, people warm to them slowly, okay? And we have seen an increase in interest from when we started. We, we have seen uh, more interest in, uh, from even people outside Uganda because we are online. Um, we, have, uh, we recently participated in the Africa Energy Week in South Africa, Cape Town, and people knew about Barrow um, because there are people that are interested in the sector and, uh, you know, Barrow has cut out its, uh, its, itself a path to be a, a voice for Uganda's industry um, that has factual information. That, so I think the challenge is in getting time and curating the, the information so that you give people a good product. And once the product is good, people are, slight, are, are slowly, you know, catching up to, to reading the magazine. Okay. Yeah. So it's also maybe the other challenge was because of physical copies. We started with physical copies, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, not everyone can have access to the physical copies, mm -hmm. depending on where they are in the country, out of the country. Okay. So now we've solved that. Mm -hmm. We are online. We, we have a website called barrowmagazine.com. Okay. Um, and on there, you can subscribe okay. and read, the, you know, read ma the magazine, all our latest issues. Okay. Uh, you know, brother, mentioning of physical copies and all, all the like, yeah. um, magazines in the country, yes. we are used to the physical ones. Yes. And this brings me to um, my question of where can we access? Mm -hmm. You have a copy with you here today, this yeah. morning, uh, just for the viewers to know um, how it does look like exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, so the picture on your screen clearly gives you um, a clear uh, image of how the Barrow, mag of how Barrow magazine looks like. Yeah. So it's um, the kind of situation whereby Ugandans need to know as well. Yeah. Where can they find the, the magazine? How much does it cost? Yeah. And you did mention quarterly. They actually come out on a quarterly basis. Yes. But do you have a fixed debt yeah. uh, when people are supposed to be expecting it? Yeah. For example, maybe an estimation of 12th to the 14th of this month and all that. Yes. Take us through that as well. Okay, so um, right now you can get all our copies in the, in, in the bookshops around town. You, okay. can, you know, it's in Aristoc, it's in... Uh, Uganda Bookshop, it's in um, Bookpoint. Mm -hmm. So all the major bookshops around, are around town, they're there. Um, then as I mentioned, it's online. So www.barrowmagazine.com. Then you'll be able to subscribe and okay. read online. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, so this issue that I'm holding, that mm -hmm. I was holding, yes. is our latest issue, mm -hmm. which is cost? our October issue. Okay. So it, it goes for 25,000. Okay. Even the yeah. initial ones were the same price? Yes. Okay. It goes for 25,000 and I feel like uh, it's value for money. Once you pick up a copy and mm -hmm. peruse through, you will definitely agree that it is value for money. Um, and also, these magazines are actually distributed for free in some of the companies, um, some of the stakeholders mm -hmm. within the oil and gas sector. So in order to avail them to the public, we sell in the bookshops mm -hmm. and online, but also we distribute for free mm -hmm. um, to the big stakeholders within the oil and gas sector. We are also on Twitter, so you can follow us at Barrow Magazine. Mm -hmm. And uh, on there, we put all the updates about when our next issue is, we discuss the latest topics in the oil and gas sector, we post on a daily basis what are the mm -hmm. actual opportunities. In, so whether they are jobs, where they are tenders in the oil and gas sector, mm -hmm. you will find that on our social media platforms. Mm -hmm. So that is close to around six dollars? Yes. Around six to seven, six point five dollars? Yes, about um, six point five dollars. Mm -hmm. For uh, anyone who is buying it from the other currencies, maybe. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to make it, you know, to take it out. So it's in Hoimar as well, oh. the oil district. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've had requests to take it to Mbarara, to take it to Ginger. So that at least everyone has yes. an idea. Of so that 
so that more people can have access. So that means you're getting positive reviews. That is very good as well. Yes. Uh, looking back to the Barrow Magazine, have you had chances to partner, besides uh, getting these interviews with the big players in the sector, yes. have you got any uh, partnerships or collaborations or companies, stakeholders who are willing uh, yeah. to partner with you to continue pushing? And yes. um, must I say, have you even got any from the government itself? Yeah. Hmm. Um, right now, yes, we have made partnerships, and as I mentioned recently, we were in Cape Town uh, okay. because we had a partnership with the Africa Energy Week, mm -hmm. the Africa Energy Chamber, and um, we were one of their media partners. And through that, we were able to expose Barrow to a bigger audience. Uh, we've also partnered with Adipec, which is um, one of the biggest, uh, actually it is the biggest oil and gas conference in the world in Abu Dhabi, which was also last month in October. Um, then locally, we have partnered with some people. We've we partnered with Stanbic, Stanbic Bank. Oh. They have been one of our, of our very strong partners. And... Um, all other partners that we have is they we are partnering them with them in terms of sponsored ads so that is what we would like to we would like uh, for companies to appear um, and advertise in our magazine to be on our online platforms and we have uh, a process for that so if you can email us go on our website all our contacts are there uh, we're open for partnerships we've um, not necessarily partnered with with government entities yet uh, maybe we, but we work very closely with them. Um, you will find a lot of them have written in Barrow Magazine. So you have government officials have given us interviews, which are in, in Barrow Magazine. We look forward to opportunities to partner with them in the future. Um, but currently, that's, uh, that's where we are at. OK. Yeah. And um, articles. You have yeah. re uh, you, you I've, I've seen there some uh, articles written by stakeholders in the sector. Yes. I've also realized we also have some other um, readers who also have their say. Uh, yeah. In a world where we have a lot of exposure to lots of information and everything, how do people reach out to you in case yeah. uh, they have an article relating to the oil and gas sector and they want it in Barrow Magazine? <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, yes, so our aim is to have Barrow Magazine be a voice to the Uganda's industry. Um, and so we definitely welcome people that want to contribute. Uh, we have an editorial team, so you would have to reach out to our editor, um, who is, um, I can, should I give them the email address? Sure. So the email address is ara.katunji, K-A-T-U-N-G-I, at barrowmagazine.com. Um, or you can also go on our website, www.barrowmagazine.com. You can also reach out to us on Twitter, uh, which is at Barrow Magazine. You can reach out to us on Instagram, which is at Barrow Magazine UG. And uh, yes, send us an email um, or DM us on social media. Uh, we have a team that will go through whatever article that is sent to us and then decide which one we can put in the magazine. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, of course, you can uh, definitely grab yourself a Barrow magazine uh, copy at 25,000 Ugandan shillings. If you haven't bought any, uh, you can also seek f uh, for the very first edition that was released in November yeah. last year. So when you look at this particular one, is the October edition. So uh, three editions have been released so far. On a quarterly basis, you'll be able to get new uh, editions of Barrow magazine <coughs> to keep up to speed with Uganda's oil and gas sector. It's an yeah. exciting one. Uh, if you come to think of it, if you're a stakeholder, uh, someone who is intending to uh, be a stakeholder as well, where are the opportunities at? How can you tap into or dive into the sector bigger and better? You can as well uh, grab the copy and read more about it. As we're summing up, uh, Bravo, yeah. um, what are your projections as an individual in relation to the oil and gas sector? Mm. When you look at how fast we are growing into an oil uh, producing country or state in the next few years yeah. what would be the projections or where would you be seeing us mm. as a country thank you very much um, so I, I look at the oil and gas sector as an enabler you know as an enabler of economic prosperity of Uganda um, of course it's not the the silver bullet that is going to fix all our problems True. but it is going to contribute significantly because 
our GDP currently is around 45 billion US dollars. And as I was telling you that this, the oil and gas sector is bringing direct investment of a, to the tune of 15 billion US dollars. Mm. So that is over 30% of our GDP. So I see that filtering through mm. um, all the different sectors, not just the oil and gas sector. Uh, I see that filtering through to um, the infrastructure, for example, sector, mm. the road network, the, um, as you know that along the eco pipeline that is going to be built, they're also going to bring another fiber, a fiber optic cable, which is going to be to increase internet connectivity within the country. Mm. It's also creating a new corridor for trade um, of uh, Uganda is going to, you know, use another, have an alternative uh, corridor for trade. And I, so my projection is that um, the oil and gas sector is going to touch um, all the sectors in the country and it's going to be an enabler to help us really use the revenue that we'll get from the oil and gas sector to, to enhance some of the sectors that most of the Ugandans are employed in, like the agriculture sector, mm. like the industrial sector. Okay. So part of the oil and gas sector, we, we've been talking a lot about the drilling of the oil, about the producing, mm. but then there is also the petrochemical side, you know, the refining side yes. where we have the, Kav the Kavalega Industrial Park where we're going to set up a refinery and also a whole peripheral of uh, petrochemical companies where you can produce, you know, Mm -hmm. car parts where you can produce uh, most of the things that we import from abroad. So I think the oil and gas sector is here to stay. Uh, currently there is, we've only started touching the surface because the oil that we are seeing now that we have proved is only 15%. Only 15% of the potential has been explored. So there is companies right now that are doing more exploration so we're likely to see more discoveries which will increase how much oil we have. And so I, I see Uganda being a produce, an oil producing company, sorry, country for mm. a while. Oh, well. Yeah. And of course, uh, there you have it uh, from um, uh, the publisher and founder of Barrow Magazine. And well, obviously, when you look at uh, the situation coming up, he's also part of the stakeholders. I did mention we do have quite many stakeholders here. Yeah. And um, even the slightest of elements can be a stakeholder in this regard. You can supply to the oil and gas sector both directly and indirectly. But the main focus is how uh, we can utilize it to ensure that we grow and develop as a country. Our conversations have been entirely on Barrel Magazine, but as well um, bringing together the knowledge of the oil and gas sector. Uh, my guest this morning was Bravo Ronnie Katunji, who is uh, the founder and publisher of Barrel Magazine, who, was, uh, who, we, who we were actually having this morning as well. So he does reveal that the magazine is published every after four months, yeah. if I'm right, on a mm -hmm. quarterly basis. The very first edition was in November last year, that is 2022. So we've, uh, we've actually seen three editions coming up in a span of one year. So that is something that we are definitely going to be having every other year that passes by. Yeah. And of course to follow up with the oil and gas sector uh, developments in the country, Barrow Magazine is uh, a copy that you can grab at 25,000 Ugandan shillings as well so that you can read about the same. Many thanks for joining us this morning for UBC uh, Good Morning Uganda Extra. I'm Joram Paul Sonko. I wish you all the best for the day. Have a good one, a blessed one as well. Till tomorrow, good morning. Live from UBC Studios in Kampala, this is Good Morning Uganda Extra. African Airline Association, in conjunction with Uganda Airlines, presents the 55th AFRA Annual General Assembly between the 19th and 21st November 2023 at Speak Resort Hotel, Munyonyo, in the heart of Uganda, the Pearl of Africa. In attendance will be 500 high-profile African and global aviation leaders, 40 airline CEOs making strides to transform aviation for development. The 55th AFRA AGA is proudly powered by
UBC is the national public broadcaster. We educate, inform, entertain and inspire our audiences. You can watch us on free to air channel 001, DSTV channel 282, Go TV channel 371, Star Times channel 201, Zuku TV channel 20 and Azam TV channel 350. Even when your subscription expires, you can still watch UBC for free on your pay TV platforms. Uh, previously, in most of these areas that we had prioritized, uh, farmers would produce.